Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at the Beehive die set by Olivia Rose from Chapter 2, 2022. Uh, and I'm a new dad. Uh, cue the applause. Uh, hopefully we can put a, an applause sound effects over this. Um, and I'm going to be making my daughter Maisie's first birthday card. I know it's a bit early, it's a year early really, but we're going to be, not, not card, a birthday invite. Um, so let's have some fun. So this is a really, really fun make to create because we're going to do a few inking techniques. We're going to layer up some inking and we're going to do some stenciling, which is one of my favorite things to do. So if we stencil in, obviously we're going to start with some of our stencil film. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do before I cut this, because I'm going to be cutting this with this large circle here. Now I've got a concentric circle, but we only need a circle framelit die for this. But a nice large one like that. Um, in fact, one that's going to fit around your birthday or, or whatever the party invite for is messaging, you know, the address and things like that. So one that's going to fit around there. Now, before I cut it, I'm actually going to tear it because this is a nice, a nice effect. I like to include some organic edges along with those straight or rounded edges there. So what I'll do now is I'm going to place my framelit just off the edge of this torn edge here. And that's going to create like, you know, a, an almost complete circle with a torn piece out of it. And it'll be a really nice effect. So let's cut that out. And there we are. So we've ended up with something that looks like this. Now, this might be a bit hard to see, but what it is, it's a circle frame. Uh, it's a circle cut of the stencil film, but with that nice straight torn edge there. I'll just move my machine out of the way because I won't be using it yet. So now that we've got this, now with this stencil film, you can just hold this down and you can try inking around it. But for me, it's going to be easier with this make, especially if I just spray a little bit of um, semi-permanent spray adhesive on there. So. Uh, I'll do that right now. There we are. And we'll notice I didn't spray much there because what I don't want is for this to stick right down and does not be able to peel it off because sometimes if you spray a bit too much, you can end up with it doing that. So I'm going to stick this so that it frames my writing evenly and perfectly with it being semi-permanent if i get it wrong i can just take it off and try again there we are that is perfect now this area is ready for me to ink and i know that this area is going to remain clean now what i love about inking a make like this is sometimes when you're inking it might look too subtle while you're doing it but when you peel away that masked area, you realize that the sharp edge makes it really visible. So over the years, I've realized that sometimes it's best not to go in too intensely with the colors. And you'll notice that I'm getting a lot of this color. This is Wild Honey, by the way, a Ranger ink uh, by Tim Holtz. And I'm getting a lot of it off on my mat. So with it being this fantastic beehive dye, I've decided to make a bee themed make. So all these colors are gonna be reminiscent of honey and sunshine. So there we are. I'll come in with a little bit more now just to go around the edges, get a tiny bit off there. And there we are. And I can be nice and messy with this because when we peel it away, you're gonna see that straight edge makes it look intentional then. Okie doke. Okie doke. Since I've become a dad, I've started saying things like okie doke all the time, which I don't mind at all. There we go. Now, I will die cut 
well, I would have die cut. Uh, this shape, so this is this is one of the shapes, this honeycomb pattern. It's a really cool one, this, because it's actually a concentric honeycomb pattern. So we have loads of concentric hexagons side by side there. So you can use these die cut pieces, or you can actually use this aperture that gets cut out there. So I'm also going to apply a little bit of my spray adhesive to this and not much is needed at, not much is needed at all. I'm gonna place this so that it's nice and, what's the word? So is it perpendicular? The, perpendicular, so the straight lines are gonna be going right across the card here. And there we are. So I can pat that down now. Then I'm gonna come in with my darker, color here and the darker color I'm using is going to be rusty hinge so a nice orangey color but I want it to be I want it to have an impact and rusty hinge is, is an absolutely lovely color and here I'm just going to go over the these hexagons here and when I peel all this off you'll see that these spaces are left that we're going to have the darker hexagon elements coming through that lovely wild honey color. Now before I take these off, there's one more effect that I want to add. Well, one more effect with the inks and then we're gonna, then we're gonna use one of my favorite pieces from our effects range. So here we are as it stands this is what it looks like right now but i want to include some more kind of uh i want to make it a bit more messy a bit more wild bees are wild wild honey we're getting a, a theme here i'm going to make it into a nice wild piece here and the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to apply some of this rusty hinge down on my mat i'm going to spray it not too much because I want it to remain quite intense and then I'm going to come in with this flicking technique here just all over but not too much because I don't want to I'd rather make it look like I've tried to do this than I just spilt my orange juice over the make so we're going to come more intense in some areas and that's it for me so this is what it looks like at the moment. Now, before I peel this away, and it's so satisfying when you peel these away because you, you're left with basically your entire make. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna come in with um, some 3D adhesive. Now, I'll just avoid this area because Silly me, I thought I'd forgotten my kitchen paper. The beauty of the mat is I can just clean it so easily. There we go, and this surface is ready to work on again. I'm gonna come in with some of my 3D adhesive now. Now, this stuff is absolutely great because it's going to, it's gonna maintain its structure, shall we say, as, I'm, as I do a nice spread on here, you can make them look really cool. So I'm gonna come down here, like that, do a nice organic pattern. I'm gonna actually come straight over this circle so it comes out the other side, because we're just kind of balancing off our making now. If you look at this, you can see all those lovely kind of blemishes in the streak there and I want these these are what are going to pick up my foils in just a sec um, so I'll show you me peeling this away now and I'll show you what's left and then we'll move on to the one that I've got prepared where this has actually dried um, so let's take away the stencil film so we're going to come up here And then I'm gonna peel it away, doing that lovely big reveal. Any bits that are still stuck down, I'll just peel off a little bit later. I wish it had all come off in one big go. There we go. Have a look at that. So there's my beehive pattern. And then I can take this away. And we're gonna be left with that lovely 
stenciled semicircle. Perfect. Now I'll just move this to one side. And this is what we're left with now. But what I would do with this is I would leave it to dry. So you want to wait until it's dried clear and you can touch it then. Because what, what it looks like is this. So you can see here, if I just move this around in the light, you can see the shiny part here. But if you get in close, you can see those blemishes. Now, you might think that this is not going to sort of adhere to the, the foils, but you can actually counter that by using your heat tool on the low setting and just very, very quickly heating that adhesive back up because that's going to bring the tack back. Bring the tack back. I'm going to get that on a t shirt. So, uh, I'm going to come in now with my rose gold uh, foils here. So these foil sheets are fantastic. I'll take one out. Now, the confusing thing about these is whether, which side you're using it on. But just think of this, which side do you want to be able to see? That should be facing out from the card. Um, you guys probably won't struggle with that, but I'm not the brightest button sometimes. Okay. I'm going to rub that down with my knuckle until I can see the imprint of these of the um, the area where I've applied that adhesive, and then I can come away and bring that away. And we can see here already. Look at that! A nice shiny solid strip there of rose gold metallics. Now I'm going to carry on going on the other side of there. Uh, because I went onto the other side of the circle. So with me heating that with the heat tool, that's reactivated the tack. Um, and it, you know that's all it takes. You can leave that for as long as you want, really. And you're going to be able to reactivate that tack. Bring back the tack. And there we are. That's what this looks like. So. That in itself, to me, is absolutely beautiful. But remember, this is going to be a child's birthday party. Um, but it doesn't have to be a child's birthday party. Uh, this is quite exquisite, to be fair. I, I think maybe, I mean, I'm not going to say it's wasted on a baby, but you might go with something softer for a baby, but this could be anyone's birthday or party invite here. Now, to finish this off and make it into a children's party, I've pre-cut my bee elements from that beehive set by Olivia Rose. And we're just going to stick these down. And what you'll notice about these, I'm using foam tape for one, but what you'll notice is that the wings are made out of the stencil film, which is a really nice effect. Just along the edges. And I'm not happy with where I've put that bee there, so I'm going to actually pick them up. I'm going to just turn him slightly. And there we are. So finally, the last thing to add on this make, there is a small floral element that comes with this set. And I love it. I love this tiny floral element. That's all it needs. And I've gone for some pink. I'm going to decide where to put it. Do you know what? There is absolutely perfect. So I might just use some of that adhesive that I used before. And then we're going to stick that down like this. You might choose to use the flower sculpting kit and you could just shape that flower so it's sticking off. But there we are. One more thing to do just to complement this rose gold because here at Sizzix we've thought about it and we think everything should be cohesive. So I've cut out to the right size some of the same colour, the rose gold of our opulent cardstock. And I'm going to apply some adhesive to the back of here. And there we are. I'll stick that down. That's just going to give it a nice, elegant, thin border. And that's going to really bring out that rose gold that we applied earlier. And here it is. 
the finished make. Have a look at that. So we, we started with the stenciling. We've just kept this part nice and bright. I've used nice bright white cardstock. And then we stenciled over the inked part here with the, with the um, beehive sort of hexag hexagonal shape. And then we've come in here with that streak of the 3D adhesive and just applied some of that foil um, the rose gold foil sheet to there and then added these lovely bee embellishments and that really cute little floral embellishment too. It's where this set really complements and make like this. So I really, really hope you've enjoyed watching this. Um, I hope it's given you an idea. As I always mention, we love to hear uh, your thoughts and we love to see what you've made at home. So if you like this video, uh, subscribe and make sure you send us a comment you know show, show us what you've made and just what you think of the video um, and as always thanks for watching and I will see you next time goodbye